Thank you, Karen. Near the cross, that's what we're gathered in that uh, place that reminds us how much God loves us. Just want a, a few announcements again. We have the Lenten uh, services, uh, 5.30 fellowship, and then the 6.30 Holden evening service, and the youth have been sharing their faith statement and a $100 project, what they've learned and, and how God blessed uh, that effort. There's a sign up for Easter flowers out in the narthex, and then there's also a, a welcome a gift tree for Pastor Josh Geisen and his family, and that's out on the table in the narthex. Take something, uh, one in the envelopes. They want to welcome him with some gifts of uh, Wisconsin, the local area, and I'm sure if, if you don't have a gift certificate, however you can say welcome and how can we help with the transition. Uh, I want to thank the choir is going to be singing so let's uh, begin. Why don't we stand uh, for confession and forgiveness? And we begin our service in the name of our triune God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who makes a way in the wilderness, who walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. And now let us take a moment to reflect upon our lives and confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we have wandered far from you and we have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us, forgive us, and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live a life in love. Amen. Remain standing for our opening hymn, 339, 339, Christ the life of all the living.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us join together in praying the prayer for this third Sunday in Lent. Let us pray. Eternal God, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and the resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it and bring your saving love to fruition in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And we have an anthem by the choir.
Thank you. Good morning. Our reading today is from Psalm 63, chapters 1 through 8. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Therefore I gaze upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. For your steadfast love is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So I will bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My spirit is content as with the richest of foods, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My whole being clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. This is the word of the Lord. Stand as you're able. Gospel lesson for this third Sunday in Lent is from the Holy Gospel of St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way that they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for these three years I have come looking for the fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> and grace to you and peace in and, and Christ Jesus who calls us to repent, turn our lives around, and uh, forgive others as we have been forgiven. Amen. I'm sure you would agree it's nice to have a, a caring person in your life if it's a, a friend, maybe your mom or dad, maybe a spouse who loves you, cares about you so much that they're willing to tell you the truth. Someone who points out uh, to you if you made an error or if you're wrong a good caring person in your life who tells you the truth, points on an area where you need to make a change or improve. It's nice to have a friend who tells you the truth even though it might be painful 
uh, embarrassing, humbling for you to hear. In our lesson for today, I think uh, Jesus is revealed as such a caring, honest uh, friend and savior. When he commands and invites uh, the people, you and me, to repent. In that one word, repent, he's revealing to us the truth that our sinful pride, that the world, that Satan, doesn't want us to admit that we uh, are sinful. As the Bible says, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Jesus lovingly says to us, repent, something that we want to uh, deny, cover up. He says, admit uh, that you do the things that you know are sinful and you don't do the righteous things that you know you should do to please God. Jesus lovingly commands and invites you and me to repent. Uh, admit we don't love our neighbors as ourselves. We don't love God with all our heart and soul, mind and strength. And when he says repent, he's saying instead of living with guilt and shame, uh, a conscience that's troubled, instead of living with fear of impending uh, judgment, instead of comparing yourselves to others trying to put on this facade of holiness and righteousness, he says confess and then forgive others as God has forgiven you. Jesus uh, is honest with us. He tells us the truth. We're simple. Our lives are broken. They can be, become a mess. But if you think about it, you realize throughout Scripture, God used imperfect people with flaws, sinfulness, uh, to accomplish his will, to share the good news of his salvation. Think about Adam and Eve after their fall, after they tried to hide their shame from God. God told them from them, from their seed, the Messiah would be born. Like Samson, he trusted in his hair for strength rather than God, but God would use him for the building up his, his kingdom. God uses imperfect people, he ch the chosen people, the Israelites, after they were set free from bondage. They, as they journeyed through the wilderness for 40 years on their way to the promised land, and scientists now say they realize why it took 40 years to get from Egypt to Israel. Perhaps you've heard why. Uh, scientists say, well, it would have taken them only a couple of years, but Moses was a man. And he kept saying, I know the way. <laughs> no, just we'll keep going a little further. <laughs> <laughs> but the Jews, as much as they received from God, they built a, an idol of gold, and they complained and, crump and grumbled. God used imperfect David, who would have an affair with Bathsheba and have her husband Uriah killed on the battlefield. God uses flawed, sinful people like you and me. And in the New Testament, it continues on. The disciples would all flee after Jesus was arrested in the garden. Peter would deny his Lord three times that he even knew him. Thomas would doubt the resurrection. And God would uh, call St. Paul, who would describe himself as the chief of sinners, who persecuted, uh, killed Christians, God would use him to become the greatest evangelist. Jesus says to you and me, repent. You don't have to uh, live a life that's uh, perfect 
You don't have to uh, try to put on this facade of righteousness and holiness. Just be yourself. And then say to God, Lord, I'm sorry that because of my sinfulness, your beloved son Jesus had to die. And then part of repentance is saying, I'm going to try my best to turn my life around and live in ways that are pleasing unto you. I think part of repentance is where you say, I'm not saved by my holiness, my goodness, my perfection, but I'm saved by grace, gift from God, even though I'm unworthy. Someone said the letters in grace, G-R-A-C-E, stand for God's riches at Christ's expense. We're saved because Jesus paid the price in full through his suffering and death to win our forgiveness. And then part of repentance is to say, Lord, you have forgiven me. Now I want to reconcile, forgive others. Our lives are broken. Jesus is helping us realize that. I heard of a Japanese art form. I believe it's called kintsuji, which means golden repair. It's an art form in which the artist takes broken pottery or broken ceramic vessels, like a, a cup, a plate, a vase, and then repairs and fixes it, mends it, glues it back together with the lacquer that is dusted with the precious metal of gold, silver, or platinum. And it, in this art form, the cracks, the brokenness, uh, that becomes the beauty of the piece. It reveals the imperfections that is really the masterpiece. And as these uh, broken pieces are mended with the precious metals, they become stronger and become much more precious and valuable. We live broken lives that are often a mess, shattered. But Jesus is saying, repent. You don't have to be perfect without blemish. It's in those wounds, it's in those scars, it's in those difficulties that he brings healing. He, he brings us back together and he sees a beauty that we can share with others as we're vulnerable, transparent, and real people. I've been watching the NCAA men's basketball tournament and yesterday as I was watching it, maybe you saw this, there was a commercial. And that ad ended with the words, he gets us. And it said, go online, he gets us.com. And so I went online, and there the website talks about how Jesus gets our lives, because he is human too. It didn't talk about his glory, his power, his uh, righteousness. It talked about how Jesus was a flawed, broken human who lived in a sinful world and experiences what you and I experience. He's human. It says he was arrested and wrongly judged. Jesus was a refuge. Our Lord it reminded us, suffered anxiety. And this website, he gets this. He said he experienced broken relationships. He knew loneliness as he walked the earth. He struggled with poverty to make ends meet. And it says, whatever you're experiencing, Jesus has faced it too. Jesus loves you. Repent. Take off the mask the facade, the hypocrisy. Jesus loves you just as you are. Let him see the wounds, the scars, the imperfections. Uh, and realize that's what people are looking for too. When they visit the church, 
when they come to St. Luke's. Uh, they're not looking for everything to be perfect and uh, no problems. They're looking for a place where they can just be themselves and know that they're surrounded by fellow sinners who've been saved by God's grace. Jesus uses imperfect people. He uses imperfect congregations. And so if there's things in your past that uh, are troubling you, just confess it. Repent. Pray that God uh, will bring healing and wholeness. And as you welcome uh, Pastor Josh Geisen, realize he's going to have his faults and problems. He's going to have his needs. Uh, but he's here to minister to you as a fellow sinner saved by grace. I want to close with a little reading that reminds you uh, that the church has to be a place where we are transparent, where we are human. We don't get on our high horse, put on a facade that we're so high, holy and righteous, but that we are a place uh, that re reflects our Lord and his compassion and care, his love for the, the sinners. This was written by a, a woman uh, and given to a pastor at a church, large church, uh, in Barrington, Illinois, uh, Willow Creek. She had suffered abuse as a child and a woman, and she wrote this to the church members. And I think a word for you and me. Do you know, do you understand that you represent Jesus to me? Do you know, do you understand that when you treat me with gentleness as members of the church, it raises a question in my mind that maybe God is gentle too. Maybe he isn't someone who laughs when I'm hurt. Do you know, do you understand that when you members of the church listen to my questions and you don't laugh, I think, what if Jesus is interested in me too? Do you know, do you understand that when I hear you talk about arguments and conflicts and scars from your past that I think maybe I'm just a regular person instead of a bad person, a no good little girl who deserves abuse? If you care, I think maybe God cares. And then there's this flame of hope that burns inside of me. And for a while, I'm afraid to breathe because it might go out. Do you know? Do you understand that your words are God's words? Your face, his face to someone like me? Please, be who you say you are. Please, God. Don't let this be yet another trick. Please, let this be real. Please. Do you know, do you understand that you represent Jesus to me? Jesus says, repent. You don't have to put on a facade. You don't have to try to be perfect. Admit you're a sinner saved by grace, and then seek to welcome, forgive, love others. In Jesus' name, amen. And let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for your honesty, for telling us that we fall short and we need your saving grace. Thank you for bringing healing and wholeness in our shattered lives, in congregations like St. Luke that always have their problems, their challenges. And thank you, Lord, for giving us another opportunity to try a little bit harder and then claim that gift of salvation by grace through faith. Amen.
And now I invite you to stand. And I'm looking for my bulletin. <laughs> three, three What's 31. the hymn number? 331, as the deer runs to the 331. river. 331. 331. Please stand. Let us join together in confessing our faith according to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we continue now with our prayers and our prayer response will be merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord, thank you for the command and invitation for us to repent of our sins, to lay them before you, and to return to you, and in our repentance to claim the gift of salvation by grace through faith. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord, with the arrival of Pastor Geisen, help the members of St. Luke reach out, invite unchurched family members, co-workers, people who they know have left the church. Encourage the members, give them opportunities to extend a simple invitation to come to St. Luke's and experience the exciting time of ministry where all will be accepted and cherished as sinners saved by grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, as the devastation, bloodshed, Destruction continues in Ukraine. We pray for the, the suffering people, the refugees, those who are mourning the 
destruction and the death of loved ones, the people fighting for the homeland. We pray for world leaders that diplomacy will take place and that peace will come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. (laughs) And Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are, are homebound and sick, experiencing health problems uh, and are hospitalized. We especially pray for Nancy, for Larry, for Susan, Paul, Lyle, Ron, for Paul and Daryl, for Judy, Larry, Joe, Judy, Juanita, uh, and Carrie's mom and, and dad, Ron and Judy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beautiful choir music uh, this morning that touched our hearts. And the Lenten Holden evening services and the inspiration of the confirmation students continue to bless St. Luke's in so many ways so that it can continue to be a blessing. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And now we lift up within our hearts our own personal needs and petitions, our gratitude and thanksgiving, and the names of loved ones who need your abiding presence. And to your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, grace, and goodness, which is ours in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And And now please take a moment to greet one another and share the peace of God. You may be seated as we continue our worship with the giving of the offering. Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. Extravagant God, 
You have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the bloody and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the pastoral feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so, so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins, do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And I'm going to invite you to be seated. I know it can be a little challenge to open up the individual communion uh, sets. When you think about Jesus, he always uh, liked to sit at the table with uh, sinners and outcasts. And so our Lord comes to us with our brokenness, our, our flaws. And in this bro broken bread, he brings healing and wholeness. And so, sinners saved by grace, the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And brothers and sisters, the blood of Christ shed for you.
And as you're able, I invite you to stand. And now may Christ's body and blood strengthen and keep you always. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Take off the mask, the facade, and just be real. God loves you just the way you are, with your flaws, your imperfections. And then, as you have been forgiven, saved by grace through faith, uh, forgive others. Be reconciled. Amen. Amen. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to the world in need. Amen. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. May Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, majestic and mighty who gets us, who experienced our own suffering, brokenness, and pain, may he bless you this day and unto eternity. Amen. Just a reminder, first got to say thank you for coming. It's finally a day we didn't have snow or turned our clocks back. or <laughs> My power didn't go out. This was great. It's a beautiful sunny day. I want to thank Karen and Sandy, the choir, uh, you for attending. Again, we have uh, gift certificates or envelopes. You can take one. But think about how you're going to greet Pastor Geisen and his family and just a couple of weeks he'll be here. I think he's arriving maybe this coming week and going to be doing a few preparatory things in the office. And, uh, and then also there's a sign-up sheet for uh, flowers for, for Easter. I believe that's all the announcements are. Sending him is 338 beneath the cross of Jesus. Sinners saved by grace, uh, share that saving gospel. Invite someone to come to church with you. Exciting things are happening here at St. Luke's. May you go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God. Thank you all.